The structure of neurons reflects their function. One part of the cell receives incoming signals. Another part generates outgoing signals. Your goals for learning are to understand the basic anatomical features of neurons and the function of each anatomical region, to understand information flow in neurons and the structural basis for communication between neurons. Here's what you need to know. The anatomy of a typical cell. The function of support cells in the nervous system. Definitions of ion, central nervous system, and peripheral nervous system. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. Because of their unique anatomical design and because they are excitable, neurons can communicate. They communicate with each other, with muscles, and with glands. Click each neuron to see it send a signal to its target cell. Neurons come in many different shapes and sizes. In this module, we will examine the most common central nervous system neuron, the multipolar neuron. All neurons have three characteristic structural features, a cell body, a receptive portion, and a transmitting portion. In most neurons, the cell body, or soma, is located centrally. Multiple branching processes, called dendrites, extend from the soma, forming a structure resembling the branches of a tree. A thin single process called the axon also extends from the soma. Click the buttons to highlight the dendrites, cell bodies, and axons. Let's examine the structural features of a typical neuron to see how they are related to function. Click each anatomical region of the neuron to reveal its function. The branched dendrites receive signals coming in from other cells and send them toward the axon. The cell body is the main nutritional and metabolic region of the neuron. Like the dendrites, it receives signals from other cells and sends them toward the axon. Both the dendrites and the cell body also sum up or integrate the incoming signals. Together, the dendrites and cell body constitute both the receptive and integrative regions of the neuron. The axon generates an action potential, an outgoing signal also called a nerve impulse, and conducts it to the next cell. The axon is the transmitting or conductive region of the neuron. Neurons receive and integrate signals at one location and transmit an action potential at another location. Information flow in neurons is directional. Drawing on what you've learned so far about neuron structure and function, trace the path of information from dendritic input to neuron output by clicking on the three anatomical regions in the correct order. The incoming signals are integrated, and if the summed signal is large enough, an outgoing signal, or action potential, is generated. The action potential is conducted along the axon toward the target cell. The dendrites and cell body provide a large surface area for communication with other neurons. Signals from other neurons are received at synapses, the junctions between neurons. Click a small neuron to see signals sent from one neuron to another at a synapse.
Axons vary in length. They can be short, just one or two millimeters, communicating only with cells in their immediate vicinity. If the neuron on this page had a cell body 50 microns in diameter, its axon would be only one millimeter long. Axons can also be very long, more than a meter, and communicate over long distances. For example, the axon of some spinal cord neurons can reach all the way to the muscles of the big toe. In such neurons, the axon makes up most of the volume of the cell. In general, the longest axons are associated with the largest cell bodies. Each neuron has a single axon, which arises from the cell body at a region called the axon hillock. Axons can branch, forming axon collaterals. At their terminal ends, axons can branch profusely, forming thousands of endings called axon terminals. The action potential, or outgoing signal, is generated at the axon hillock and conducted along the axon to the axon terminals. Click the axon hillock to see the action potential. Some axons are covered with an insulating material called myelin, which is produced by the support cells of the nervous system. To illustrate the formation of the myelin sheath, we will look at how the Schwann cells, support cells within the peripheral nervous system, produce myelin. To see the process of myelination, click the axon. As a Schwann cell wraps around and around the axon in the process of myelination, its cytoplasm is squeezed out. The tightly wound cell membrane becomes the actual insulation. To see the process of myelination again, click the Schwann cell. Because Schwann cells are small compared to the length of an axon, it takes many of them to insulate a single axon. Neighboring Schwann cells do not touch each other, so there are gaps in the myelin sheath where the axon membrane is exposed to the extracellular space. These gaps, called the nodes of Ranvier, are essential for conduction of the action potential. We'll learn about this type of conduction in the action potential section of this module. Click the axon to see an action potential conducted along a myelinated axon. Here's a summary of what we've covered. Neurons have receptive and integrative regions, the dendrites and cell body, which receive and integrate incoming signals. Neurons also have a conductive region, the axon, which generates and transmits an outgoing signal. Axons vary in length from 1 or 2 millimeters to more than 1 meter. Some axons are insulated with myelin. To test your knowledge, click the quiz button to go to the self-quiz. To access cross-references for this topic in your Benjamin Cummings textbook, click here. To test your knowledge, click the quiz button to go to the self-quiz.